Hi, this is Flash from Outside the Box. I wanted to share another interview. This time I sat down with Tommy Laren to discuss squatter laws and how I'm working to help people with squatter issues. I just wanna ask you to keep in mind that this is not a political issue. This is a people issue. This is a homeowner issue, this is a nation issue, and this is a world issue. I will sit down with anyone, regardless of where they are politically, to make my message non-political, to keep it about the people, to represent the people. I feel like the best thing that I can do is be an ambassador for change, and the only way I can do that is keeping and maintaining it a non-political issue and being willing to sit down with anyone, regardless of where they sit politically. I ask you to do the same. When you listen to my videos, or you listen to people talking about an issue that affects you and everybody around you, try to put politics aside and just listen to the message and support each other. And let's solve these issues, regardless of where we sit politically. Squatters, losers, and freeloaders are free to run their scam in some cities and states, but not if my next guest, the self-proclaimed squatter hunter, has anything to say about it. Flash Shelton joins me later. The next topic on the docket today is squatters' so-called rights. While some states like Florida and possibly Georgia have made moves to end this scam, others are fine allowing freeloaders to run rampant on the property of others. And these freeloaders have been abusing the system for, well, quite some time. But just for giggles, let's hear the perspective of one of those squatters from a decade ago. If I left my house, mm -hmm. say for a month. And a half. And a half. Mm -hmm. uh, you think you would be entitled to move in there, well, um, take my stuff? Well, it's a lot of, um, I'm not the only one that is squatting. It's a lot of other people on the block, if mm -hmm. you want to be technical, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people encouraged me to do what I'm doing now. But she wants her place back. Yeah, but I have put a lot of work in here and I spent a lot of money. I am on a fixed income. Is that power hooked up legit there? <laughs> Uh, my power is... That's not legit. It's not legit. No, you you, you steal a little bit of power. I am blessed. What do you do for a living? I receive Social Security. I don't have What no happened? Secrets. Disability? Yes. What's your, dis what's your ailment? I'm not going to say. You know, that's, that's her right. That's <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, it's a good thing people like my next guest have answered the call to put an end to it. He is the squatter hunter, Flash Shelton. All right, Flash, I am very excited to talk to you because this is a growing issue in America. We know that Florida has put an end to it, something that you were a part of. Other states looking to follow suit. I don't know why every red state doesn't do what Florida's done, but maybe slowly but surely as these issues are getting more national attention, we'll get there. But I know that you have kind of a personal story with this, as most people do. They get into you know some kind of work like this. So please tell me how this all started for you becoming the squatter hunter yeah first of all it needs to be every state i mean this should be a nation problem this has nothing to do with politics um you know i got into this um basically being vulnerable like everyone else uh, my father had passed away i uh, we i was taking care of my mom moved her in with me to sell her home and uh, i got a report that uh, some people broke in the back door of her house and uh and, you know, I called the sheriff like everyone, and then I heard the words that, uh, that everyone fears, every homeowner fears, that uh, it's a civil matter and that there's nothing they could do. So I just decided after learning about squatters and, and all the horror stories that everyone goes through that I was just going to figure out a system myself. I was going to break it down, find the loopholes, and, uh, and I just figured out that if they could take a house, I could take a house. And... Uh, and I informed them I was their squatter and they could leave with their furniture or without. So tell me how that works uh, so people can get a good visual of that. I mean, what you do is you really turn it back on the squatter. And you, like you said, you find the loopholes. But it's really interesting to me, like the ins and outs of how you do this and how you pull kind of 
pull one over on people that pull one over on you. So go through what that looks like, what your strategy is, so that people can really get a good idea of exactly how you're doing this. So the, you know, I start every situation with a Zoom consult. I learn everything that I possibly can from the homeowner. Um, I get a lease so to make me the, the, the legal tenant of the property. Um, also separating the homeowner from the situation because it's important to know that a homeowner cannot do this. In most states, they will actually be arrested for doing this. Um, so, you know, once I become the legal tenant, then I, you know, will use that if a tenant has a lease or, you know, then we can kind of fight lease to lease. Um, but, you know, I do everything I can to prepare, find out who they are, find out all about them. Do they have anything to lose? Do they have a job? Um, you know, do they have a criminal record? And then we will do surveillance and uh, and see if they have a routine. And when they leave the house or if they leave the house, um, we'll actually switch places with them and become their squatter, put cameras up um, and uh, wait for their return. When they return and they call law enforcement all high and mighty thinking that they're going to get us out, um, the most beautiful words I ever hear right at that point is when law enforcement tells them it's a civil matter and there's nothing we can do. Oh, I love it so much. But, you know, that sounds rather dangerous because, as you mentioned, even if someone doesn't have a, a criminal history, it doesn't mean that they won't be a criminal. It doesn't mean they won't be violent. You know, I would have to assume that somebody that is willing to be a squatter, willing to move into the property of somebody else and set up shop, I would just have to assume that that person is not an upstanding citizen in the community. So how do you avoid this situation potentially getting violent or going completely haywire? Well, I mean, it comes down to preparation, and I have to actually be scared of that to prepare for that. So I spend a lot of time knowing who I'm dealing with and looking at their traits. And, and I won't go into a situation, you know, my team and I, first of all, I don't go by myself anymore. Um, but uh, we won't go into a situation that we're not clear of what the factors are. One of the big things also is we try to catch them outside to where they aren't inside with you know, maybe a gun or knives or, or access to, to things. And, and they're also caught off guard. If I can approach a squatter the first time anyone's ever approached them, they're not expecting it. They're expecting that they're getting away with something, they're living their lives. Um, and the difference between a squatter being arrested or not in many cases comes down to possession. If I can have possession and be in the home and they're in the driveway making a fool of themselves on camera, they're the ones that get arrested. So you said that you work with the homeowners, you get a lease, and then this becomes a civil matter again. But I'm sure it's different in every state. But the squatter, you know, I believe it in some places, New York, you had to be in there for 30 days. If they're in there for 30 days and you've been in there for 12 hours, do they, in some twisted systems like liberal states, do they then say, well, I've been squatting longer, so I've been here for, you know, four months, and this guy just came in today. So in, in the court of law, uh, you know, whatever that means anymore, do they sometimes are they able to edge you out and actually lay claim to this property you know not at the time right? they would have to go through the civil process and prove to the judge that they were in there and that they were a legal tenant at that point they'd have to prove that they paid rent that they were actually a tenant once they give up possession um you know if if civil process hasn't already started once they give up possession and i maintain possession or or gain possession um then the process is, is basically flipped on them. Yeah. Can you tell me about a certain situation, maybe in, in all of these that you've done, um, what the reaction was, if you ever did deal with, you know, a violent squatter, or if you had anybody that was, I'm sure, strung out on drugs? Like, I, I can only imagine the things that you've seen. Can you tell me one of those stories? I'm sure you have quite a few. Yeah, you know, there, there was a clip that you just showed right now that was a squatter. Her name is Claudia Alva. It's in Culver City, California. She posed as a caregiver um, for an 88-year-old woman. Uh, she actually climbs in and out of the window. She doesn't care when we cut power, we cut access to the rest of the house. She basically boarded herself into a bedroom, doesn't care about her lifestyle, her living conditions. She's waiting for this woman to pass away so she can take the home. So she's willing to climb in and out of a bedroom window and in the video on my on Outside the Box with Flash, you can see and hear her reaction. And she's just, you know, she's she's, you know, crazy.
Yeah. Well, I'd imagine belligerent. It's just so interesting, the energy that some people will put into taking the property of others. And I'd have to think that with that amount of energy and, you know, in some situations, creativity, that they could maybe go get a job, a gainful employment, and then maybe pay for a residence of their own. But maybe I'm just being a crazy conservative, thinking that that might be an option for some people rather than taking over the property of others. Uh, but, you know, there's a, also been a lot of back and forth about the lock changing. This has been happening in New York, where homeowners, the actual homeowner will go in and change the locks like hey this person's squatting I can't get anybody to do anything about it it's a civil matter well I'm just gonna go in and change the locks then and there was a recent instance where the homeowner themselves they were actually arrested because they changed the friggin locks on their own property tell me how you deal with that and what that whole mess is about yeah you know homeowners are never presumed the residents so that's the the important thing to remember so if there's a homeowner and a tenant the tenant will always have all the rights Homeowners are forbidden for self-help, which means that they cannot change the locks. Because I go in as a tenant, me changing the locks with possession is a little bit different. Um, all I'm trying to do is just even the balance and basically be able to tell law enforcement, please tell them it's a civil matter. I'm willing to have them you know, go through that process. They have every right to go to that, through that process if they can prove legal tenancy. So far, it's never happened. Do they ever show up in court? Have you ever had that instance where they're that confident in themselves? It's never even gotten to the point where there's any any process whatsoever. They they have no choices and they know. Yeah, it's wild too because you know there was recently an illegal immigrant TikToker from Venezuela who said, hey, listen, this is a great opportunity for my fellow illegal immigrants to start squatting in homes. This is our next business venture. I'd imagine as people catch on to the fact that some states have done nothing about it, that this is going to become more of a problem. It's been a big problem in California. It's been a big problem with Airbnbs, people, you know, legitimately getting an Airbnb and then refusing to leave for a long period of time. I have a feeling this is only going to get worse. You know, you worked with Governor DeSantis in Florida on basically reforming this whole system so squatters, in fact, don't really have rights. Talk to me about that and what your conversations with the Florida governor were like. Well, I mean, it, it's, um, you know, I, I was honored to be a part of that and to be able to speak there. And, uh, you know, Governor DeSantis is on the right page. And I think you know, one of the things I asked for was just clear distinction between squatters and tenants and allowing tenants to maintain their rights while making squatting a criminal offense. Um, you know, and, and that is clear there now. And, uh, and I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to and hope to meet with, you know, all forms of government, uh, governors, presidents, and, and just be able to set politics aside, come together for the people and just make what's right, right. Have you talked with anybody on the other side of the issue, somebody that's advocating for so-called squatters' rights? Because, you know, you'd think that this would be a, a pretty easy thing, a no-brainer, but there are some people that, in fact, don't have brains, seemingly. So what have they said to you? People that are like, no, 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 squatters have rights. They should be able to overtake someone's property. Have you had any of those conversations, and what is their rationale? Well, I mean, it, you know, in, in the masses, um, they're they're ignorant. I mean, the ignorancy is is amazing to me. They, you know, there's this presumption that a homeowner is rich, that a homeowner is wealthy, and a homeowner doesn't, you know, they don't need this extra property, and they shouldn't have an income. There, there's, you know, this whole, you know, society out there that believes in things that just don't make sense. But, you know, as far as as this goes, um, yeah, it's just. Um, it's 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 hard to have an actual conversation with someone who won't listen to reality and um, and you know talking about it as though it doesn't exist or it's it's a small thing. The United Nations has estimated over a billion worldwide. This is a big thing. I was recently at a a party. There was tw about twenty people there. Small little going away party. Three people had current squatters at that moment just because my friend was like, hey, do you know who this guy is? Um, so, you know, I welcome it. I've got some people working on trying to, you know, make an introduction with uh, Governor Newsom. I think that would be a good step for me. I would love to be able to sit there at a table and go back and forth and have him try to justify why this is okay. 
Well, be careful because he's slimy and I can pretty much bet you that he'll make a case for it. You know, they also want homeless people to take over the stoops and the sidewalks and the beaches. So it's interesting to me that good, decent people are constantly being driven to the brink of sanity because of people that are truly insane and lawmakers that for some reason find that property rights and individual rights just don't seem to matter. But for my audience out there, people that are like, oh my gosh, I'm dealing with this issue. Uh, you know, I want this guy to help me. What can I do? Where can can people find you or find people like you to get this process started so they can turn the tables on these freeloading losers? Well, I think, um, you know, go to squatterhunters.com. You can follow my YouTube on Outside the Box with Flash. Uh, you know, actually, the influence helps me most of the time get squatters out. But um, I would say call law enforcement. But as soon as they say there's nothing we can do, don't call an attorney first, contact me, let's do a Zoom, let me break down your situation and see how we can help you. I'm building a team nationwide. I have law enforcement backing me, judges backing me. Um, it, it, it's amazing. Law enforcement, I've got, I've got active and retired law enforcement saying that they have had to turn their backs on homeowners for years, and some of them say in their entire career, and that I'm finally giving them an opportunity to be able to help a homeowner. Oh, I love to hear it. I'm sure the, those law enforcement officers feel really helpless in that situation uh, with this situation and many others that they've been neutered because of politicians who don't have the back of decent people. But Flash, thank you for all that you do. It's entertaining, but it's also such important work. Didn't think we'd have to be in this position where we'd have to have a squatter hunter, but here we are. God bless you for all you're doing, and thank you for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. Good to meet you. God bless, Flash. All right, that does it for this week of Tommy Lahren is Fearless. But before I sign off, I just want to say thank you to law enforcement officers around the nation who have been tasked with parenting and babysitting the brat college kids who have descended on campuses in the name of Islamic terrorism. May God protect you, your eyes, your nostrils, as I can only imagine what this week has been like for you. I also want to wish my dad a very happy birthday today. But from Nashville, God bless and take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, thank you for watching. Remember, if you want to help me get squatters out, just subscribe. It's my influence and the influence of yours that helps me most of the time. Just nudge them. Just give them a little bit of taste of how their life will change if I expose them. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.